So today we're going to walk through a very simple process and this allows you to take an email, excuse me, take any report that you have in your environment, whether it's in OneDrive or SharePoint, and send that out on a scheduled basis so that, for example, every seven days, I'm going to go ahead and send an email message with that information out to someone to perhaps update a report. So stay tuned. We're going to jump right to it. So we're going to do a lot of work today in Power Automate, but before we go there, um, we're going to actually use this guide here to kind of step our way through and stay tuned in the video uh, and, and you can download this free guide. So it's yours. Now there are some updates I'm going to do to it. Um, I need to put some titles on here, but you can download the guide for free. So this is a pictorial guide. So the intent here is not, not much text, just follow the pictures. So the first thing we're going to do is actually go and create a a SharePoint site we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and select on site contents create a new list we're gonna create a blank list we're gonna name it reminder manager and then we're gonna set up these fields within that list so let's go ahead and jump right to that so let's go over to our SharePoint environment now I've gone ahead and already set this up so I'm gonna walk through the steps with you you're going to open up whatever the site is that you want to use. Mine happens to be personal. I'm going to set, click on site contents. When I'm in site contents, I'm going to click on here. I'm going to say new list. So we're right here in the instructions, by the way, new list. Okay. Then it's going to pop up for me. We can do that real quick. It's going to pop up for me this screen. I'm going to click on blank list, and then it's going to ask me to fill in some information. So I'm not going to do that part of it because we already know what it is. I'm gonna open up that again. Hold on here. Reminder, there it is. Okay, so here, whoops. Here we've set up Reminder Manager, we hit Create, and then we've set up these fields. Now, you can pause the video, of course, if you don't wanna download this document, but here, here are the fields. This is a single line description, a hyperlink for the file link, multi-lines for email and message, and then sub message is a single line text. So let's walk through what that looks like here within SharePoint. Here, here's your description. And if, if I edit this, now remember to add it, you're just gonna click on here, add their single line, multi-line, and the other one we had was hyperlink right there. So if I can just look at this real quick, single line, it's this isn't rocket science. So single line, URL, multi-line, multi-line, single line. So go ahead and create those. Pause the video again if you need to, just to get these down. If you set them up with the same column heads as I have, then it'll be easier when we work through the automation, but by all means, you do not have to do that. And then I've gone ahead and added in some additional information here just to kind of play with it so we know what it looks like when we get a result. So again, pause the video if you need to. Let's move on. Then we're gonna hide a field. Now, hiding a field, this is something I do. You don't have to do it. You could use title as one of your fields. I'm not a big fan of it. So here, to hide a field, we just click on description. We go to show and hide. Title, as you see, is not there. It was there, title, right there. So we just deselect it. It was selected, we deselect it, and save, apply the changes, okay? And then the next thing we do is we go back to site comments excuse me, site contents. <laughs> and we go down to the actual one here, reminder, and we're gonna to go to settings. Now in your settings, when you look at title, there's gonna be a check mark right here, okay? And so you're gonna click on that, and you're gonna say, it's gonna say yes. You're gonna click on no, and then kind of scroll down to the bottom there and hit okay. And that will take it off as a required field. So let's catch up with the document here. So. There we are, deselecting. Here we've gone to settings. Here, that's what I was saying, where the check mark is. You're gonna click right there where it says number one. Then we're gonna click on the no and hit okay. Remember, okay is down in the corner there, okay? Then we're just gonna click on reminder manager. And then we're gonna input that data. To input the data into that list, we just hit edit in grid mode. And then we put in the information. Notice that's a description field and then here we have the file link and we're gonna put in, this is incorrect. This should say 
https colon slash slash www.google.com it will balk at you when you get through it it's going to say this field is incorrect you're going to have to go back and correct it then you hit there and you fill in all those fields so that's about it on the list it's a pretty standard list so um, fill it in and get this base information in here we're going to manage the way that the power app works from this list next thing we're going to do is create a new flow and we're going to do that we're going to create and we're going to schedule we're going to create a scheduled flow and then we're going to name it report reminder and we're going to have it go off every day once a day and we're going to create it so let's see what that looks like so if we go over to power automate here and we wanted to create we just click on create and we want to do it as a scheduled flow notice here we'd put that in we'd click that and hit day and then we hit start a uh, create excuse me and um and that's all we do so I'm going to go back in to where that is. Let's go over to the document. So we hit that. And then now we go right into where uh, the flow is being created. Now notice here, I have this running at midnight every day. You, you don't have to do that. You could set it. I've set it up to do uh, central time uh, where I am at zero hours. You can do it at any time you want. So you don't have to do these two. You could just hit create reoccurrence you'll want to change this to once a day because I think it defaults to like once a minute or something like that so oh we changed it here so you don't need to change it here you could just skip that if you want skip these two steps but I usually do them. next thing we want to do is do a get operation so we're gonna get items to do that we're gonna click on that button right there we're gonna go there and we're just gonna type in get items pretty easy and we're going to hit SharePoint. And that's the item that we want. Let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like inside. So get items here. We're going to put in our site address. And when we click on that down arrow right there, we click on that down arrow, it's going to list out all of our SharePoint sites. I've blocked it out for security reasons, but um, that's how you do that. Okay, and you're going to pick that. So let's go. We did get items. And here again, you're going to click on that down arrow. You're going to click the drop down and select your SharePoint site and then select your list and both of those right here. Once you put in your SharePoint site, it's going to let you select your list as well. And then we're going to go down here and we're going to hit advanced options and we're going to put in a 10 under top count and then go to our next step. So let's go ahead and do that. Whoops. We're going to show advanced options here. We're going to go down here and put in a 10. Now, what does this do? This means that it's counting through the last, the, the most, the top 10, right, records that are inside of that list. We only have one, but if you don't, it comes up and gives you a, a flow check, comes up and says, hey, you want to set your O data. So I just do that by default now and see other videos. I really talk about these filter queries and how to do that. We're done with this. We're going to cl click on next. It actually says next step on yours. We're going to go ahead and click on that next step. So here the next step that we're going to do is initialize a variable. Now what we're doing here, and here's the code, by the way. So if you wonder what this is, it's right here. Okay. So what we're doing is initializing. We're establishing what today is. That's all we're doing in this step. And we're creating a variable called today as a string. Okay. So that's pretty easy. When we want to do this, we click on here and this will pop up now. If I just clicked on here, for example, um, without that text in there, let's see here. I'm just going to copy that over. Let's delete it and let you see. If I just click in there, it's going to come up with this, right? And then I'm going to click on expression and I'm going to type in that code, UTC now. And then I'm going to hit OK. And now all of a sudden it's in there. So when we look at our document here, we're down here. We've initialized that variable. We've set it to today. We've done the down box to select a string, and then we put in the code, right? We clicked on expression. We put in the code. We hit OK, and then we hit next step, okay? So since we already have a next step, we don't, new step, excuse me, we don't have to do that right now. I'm just going to go to the next one. Here, we want to initialize this variable. Here, we're going to name it nine, day nine. And do you see the code right there? Same thing. We're going to do the same thing we did before. We can highlight that, copy it. I'm going to get rid of it. Here we set this variable to nine day. We go there. We go to expression. We type it in. 
Now notice that it says day eight. It says eight, but I'm calling it day nine. That's because of um, the way that the month starts counting. So it's always one day behind. So just remember that I'm on day nine and I'm looking for day eight. Then I go up, um, that's it for that. And then you go up and rename these. So to rename, you just click on rename. And I always put in parentheses what the actual flow item, the step was, right, that I put in. Because a lot of times when I re-edit these flows or I, hey, I did that in that flow, I wanna remember what this is. And then I just put in today, and then I put in nine day nine, okay? And, and you're gonna see why I did that because of the condition that we're creating here. So what we're doing here is we're just saying that the condition, we're comparing today's variable with day nine's variable. So we establish the variable here and here, and we're just comparing, and we're making sure that today equals nine, day nine. We didn't have to call it day nine, by the way. We could call it anything we wanted to. That's just how I did it. And we're just making sure they're equal. That's pretty easy. And if they are equal, so meaning this is the ninth day of the month, and that's today, right? Today is the ninth day of the month. It's gonna flow this way to yes. And then it's gonna go here and send out the email message. Now, here's something about setting this up. This is the list. Remember, we had the list in there? And let's go back to the instructions. We've kind of glossed over. So we did that. We set up this second variable. Remember, there's the code right there that you need. This one happens to be set to day 20. Notice there's a 19, and it's day 20, but it's a 19, okay? And there's the code. There's the actual string code right there, okay? And then we said, let's rename these. We clicked on the three dots. We hit rename. We type in today, okay? We do the same thing. We rename both of them to today and day 20 in this example. We're using day nine in this video. Here, we're good to go, everything's renamed, and now we're gonna add the condition. We're working on the condition now. We say now, this variable, now notice here when I clicked in that box, number one there, I have the two variables that I named, today and day 20. If we look back here, that's this right here, today and, well it's day nine in the video here, but day 20 on the documentation. So you can name it anything you want. But here we're gonna just put in today, and then the next one, we're just going to say it's equal to day 20. Boom. It's pretty easy, right? Then in the yes box, it's going to say, what do you want to do? Well, I want to add an action. And then I want to say email. So here, if we look down here, we'll just do it over here on the no box. So you can kind of see. You click on add an action. That's what we just did. And then in this example, we did email. Okay. And then we see the email right there, send email, and we just clicked on it. Now, here in the two box, okay, and I'm gonna get a few errors here, but in the two box, I wanna put in the email addresses, but I can't because I have to click on the dynamic content, okay? And then you notice here, email's one of the options. Notice it's coming from get items, okay? Get items, email. I'm just going to click on it, and as soon as I do that, it's going to do an apply to each and put this down. So I'm going to have to click on that again, and now it's going to be there. Okay, so then I go through and fill it out exactly like I filled it out on this other screen, on the yes screen. So let me go back there. So I'm sorry, I kind of switched over there on you. So here and here, and then if you look in here, this is how we have it set up. So we have email to... Then we go in and we type this in. We get email, email. We pick these fields, description and sub message, just like we were doing on the last screen. It's pretty simple. Then we type, we're gonna type in the message followed by the file link. And then this last example, we just searched for the link just to kind of show you how to do that. Then we save, we test, and uh, this kind of walks you through the test process and we're done.